wondering if he's going to just stand there and watch while his friend treats me like a piece of meat. But Lucius isn't smirking anymore. He takes a few steps forward and lays his hand and lays a hand lays on Dolohov's shoulder, pulling him firmly away from me. Don't touch mud blinds. Oh my gosh. Anton, he says, his voice very quiet. The Dark Lord is always particular about that, as you know. So if you should manage to control yourself, I think it would be for the best. Dolohov raises his eyebrows and backs away from me, his hands raising in complacence. The bonds keeping me to the wall vanish. And I fall slightly forward, pulling my ripped t-shirt close around me. Thank God. I breathe deeply, relief flowing so quickly, flooding me so quickly that I almost feel faint with it. You say so, Lucius? Dolohoff says, the insincerity with insincere difference. But the Dark Lord doesn't know won't hurt him. So, so, so you say. But if you were to find out about your unusual tastes, I do not believe that he would be so pleased. You know how he feels about such things. Besides, pure bloods, just as yourself, should now dirty your hands with a mud blood. Besides, I cannot comprehend why you'd want to play a little bitch anyways. Dolanoff laughs at that. I want to cry. Don't listen. They're just words. Meaningless, empty noises. Now stop wasting time. Lucius' voice is curt again, giving orders. He is obviously of a higher standing than Dolanoff. We have to work to do. Set the quill up, will you? Lucius brings some parchment and a tiny red quill he used yesterday out of his robes and hands them to Dolohoff, who takes them and, with one last disgusting look at me, turns to look, turns to go and set them up on the other side of the room. Lucius turns to me, keeping his eyes on my face. He moves his wand upwards in a slow, deliberate motion. I look down and see my t-shirt seal up, the two halves of material merging seamlessly together. I meet his gaze. It's a cold as ever, without a hint of warmth or kindness. Nonetheless, I feel some words well up inside me, which I have to force back down into myself before I can say them. Thank you. That's what those words are. But I'm not going to thank him for anything. I refuse. Well, at least I know that he's not going to, to hurt me in that way. Not only that, but he's not going to let anyone else either. That, at least, is a plus. I've never felt grateful for pure blood prejudice until now. He turns away from me and walks over to Dolohoff. I wish this one so hot in here. Sweat is running off my skin, making me really uncomfortable. I'll go and get started, then, Dolohoff asked Lucius with his eyes lighting up eagerly. These people enjoy pain, don't they? They enjoy watching other human beings scream and writhe in agony. Yes, I think so, Lucius replies. Although, didn't... Did I tell Bella that we were waiting for her? We would wait for her. For her. You know how much she enjoys these sort of things. Dolohoff chuckles. Bella? Oh, please, not that vile woman. But no matter. Lucius continues. I deny her something that would bring her such pleasure. We'll teach her to be more punctual from now on. Perhaps she won't turn up. Hopefully. I'll be left just with these two. A strange thing to hope for. Lucius turns to the levitated parchment and quill and speaks clearly over it as he did yesterday. Lucius Malfoy, assisting Antoine Antonin Dolohoff, Resuming the interview with the mud blood prisoner, Granger, 
in cell 15. I hate how he calls me that. It's then that I realize that he's never called me by my first name. God, my head hurts. The pen scrawls across the parchment in black ink, and Lucius turns to me. Miss Granger, he says almost politely. You remember the process, I assume? We will ask questions, and if you fail to answer them correctly, then you shall be punished. Is that understood? I nod slightly, giving him nothing else. There's no point in pretending that I don't understand him. I understand him all too well now. He gives me, he smiles at me slightly. Perhaps he thinks that I am finally learning to do as he says. Very good. We'll start off. I think it would be most interesting for you to tell us about Harry Potter's relationship with his family. Harry's family? They're not in the Dursleys. They're not going to need to know what Harry thinks about his dead parents. I could answer this question. Harry hates the Dursleys. To tell Lucius this wouldn't affect anything. But it would mean that Voldemort wouldn't be able to use them against him. I'm not going to make Lucius' job easy for him. For them. He's not on his own anymore. In a way, I wish he was. I know what to expect from him, at least. I don't know anything about Dolohoff could do, or what Bellatrix Exchange could do if she turns up. He's waiting for an answer. His parents are dead, Lucius. He flinches slightly as I say his name. I thought everyone knew that. I feel a sting slap on my cheek again, but I'm so used to it now that I don't even draw a breath. I keep my eyes steadily on his. Firstly, my blood. I think I made it clear yesterday that I do not accept insolence from you. Secondly, you know full well that I'm not asking you about his parents. I'm asking you about the family he lives with, his aunt, his uncle, and his cousin. Don't foreign stupidity, please. It doesn't suit you. What does he mean by that? It doesn't matter. I can't answer him, even though giving him this information can't really cause any harm. I can't answer him because I can't tell him. I can't let him beat me again. I'm sorry, you say, watching him closely for his reaction. Harry never mentioned his family to us. I don't know anything about them. He takes a deep breath. He knows that I'm lying. Of course he does. He steps closer to me and grips me by the chin, looking down into my face. You're looking tired, he says, a patronizing edge to his voice. It's and not at all well, either. If truth be told, you don't look as if you could not withstand much pain this evening. There's nothing wrong with me, he said him. Even though my head's pounding so badly my ears are roaring, I'm perfectly capable of facing anything you are prepared to throw at me. So I suggest that you stop wasting time and get it over with, because I won't answer you. I expect him to smile, to take the opportunity I've presented to him, and use it to cause me more pain. I accept. I expect him to instantly attempt to force an answer out of me, but he doesn't. He just stares back at me long and hard, his grip tight on my chin. It's not wise to provoke me, Miss Granger. I thought I taught you that lesson yesterday. He brings his wand up to my face and uses it to brush a lock of hair away from my cheek. Don't be a fool now. I'm not a fool. I spat at him. I'm sick of him calling me that. If I were a fool, then I would tell you what Harry thinks of his family without hesitation. He takes a deep breath through his nose, his mouth set in a very thin line. The knowledge that I'm pissing him off terrifies me, but at the same time makes me feel elated, excited, satisfied. It's one small bit of power that I have over him. The ability to make him angry. Oh, come on, Lucius! I jumped slightly at Dolhoff's voice. I'd almost forgotten he was here. She's not going to answer. Not without a bit of encouragement. Let's teach her a lesson. No. 
says Lucius, his eyes still on me. His words are from me, I know this. I want to give her a chance. The opportunity. To answer us first. He steps back away from me then, giving me space to breathe once more. I look at Dolohoff's pale, twisted face to Lucius' smooth, aristocratic one. Your attitude has changed since yesterday, I say quietly, looking at Lucius. Don't tell me you've listened to what I said to you. His face darkens slightly. Oh, yes. Make him angry. Use that power over him. Dolohoff looks inquiring at him. What's she talking about? <laughs> that sounded so black. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm not. <laughs> that was so stupid, okay. <laughs> Anyways, I was doing so well. Um, <laughs> okay. What's she talking about? What's she talking about? There we go. I guess, okay. <laughs> I raise my eyebrow at Lucius, who glares back at me. I dare you to tell him. I fucking dare you. Nothing. She just thinks she's being clever, that's all. He slides over to me and pulls me forward roughly by the arm. Standing me in the middle of the room, I wrench myself out of his grip. A pair of them begin to circle me, the lions with their prey. Harry Potter has never spoken to you about his family. Lucius' voice brims with impatience. How long have you been friends with him? He must have at least six years. I find it very hard to believe in all that time, he has never mentioned his family. Not even in passing? His voice is tight, with suppressed rage. Well, I'll just have to face it when he, comes, when he inevitably snaps and starts to torture me, because I'm not going to give in to what he wants again. I've told you. I can't help you. My voice is beginning to waver. He never once spoke to me about them. Dolohoff stops next to the levitating parchment and looks down at what is written there. She's lying. Of course she's lying! Lucius hisses, finally losing his pace, pace, patience. Oh god, he's gonna hurt me again. Of course he is. What were you expecting him to do when you refuse to give him what he wants? You can't have it both ways. Lucius comes closer to me, so close that he's practically standing on my toes. This is your last chance, he says to me, his voice very low. So low it makes my heart catch in my throat. I don't think he intends for Dolohoff to hear him. You know what I can do? I can make you sum up your horrors behind imagining with a mere wave of my wand. Tell me what I need to know, so I, you need not go through and get more pain. He pauses, and when he speaks again, his voice is so quiet, even I can barely hear him. Oh, have you not learned your lesson since yesterday? I take a deep breath, trying to clear my head. Why don't you just let him win? Just this one? Because you promised yourself that you would never do that. Don't let him win, remember, Hermione? I meet his eyes. And when I speak, my voice is almost as quiet as his own. No. I guess I'm not as fast learn such a fast learner after all. Something glints in his eyes. He steps back and speaks to Dol Dolov without looking away from me. You may do the honors, Antoine. I'm gonna keep saying Antoine. Antonin? Antonin? Whatever. It's a stupid name. Antonin? And Antonin? Antonin. 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 Antonin? Antonin. Antonin? It so Antonin sounds so fucking stupid. But I know that it is that, but it's not that. Oh yeah, he's about honors, or she's about honors, or the U. Which proves that she's English. Um, I'm gonna take a water break, but I'm not gonna stop the recording, because I'm a punk like that. I just figured out that my mom stole my music stand. She's all like, I'm not gonna steal it, and then I'd like just realized right now that she totally stole it and gave it to some chick like a bitch I was like ah oh, you stole my music 